Hi everybody in super hot and steamy but beautiful Florida this week. Welcome to part two of this short series to help match 6K Pro and video assist footage using the S5 and S5 2X. The previous video explained how to match the settings for the camera, while in this video I'm going to walk through how I color correct and color grade this footage. Let's jump right in. Okay, now that we have our footage with match settings, let's color correct the clips so they look normal. Then we'll experiment with some color grading to stylize the images. We're going to set up the color correction with the following steps. Modify camera raw settings. Add ACES workflow to 709. Correct white balance. Then match balance and color to a key clip, usually a master shot since you can zoom in on different parts to color match using the sizing tab and color if needed. Before we begin, I'll mention a quick note for the S5 2X video assist files. I had to upgrade DaVinci Resolve to 18.5 so I could even import the S5 2X video assist B-RAW files into DaVinci. It wouldn't recognize them with DaVinci Resolve Software Revision 18.1. If you're using the S5, then the DaVinci Resolve Software Revision 18.1 had no issue with the video assist B-RAW files. I'm guessing that the S5 II will probably have the same issue as the S5 2X. So just update DaVinci Resolve to 18.5, which was recently released, and you'll be good to go. This will be brief, but there is a good reason to modify B-RAW settings, depending on which camera you're using. We have two sets of clips. The first set is from the S5 2X and the 6K Pro, and the second set is from the S5 and the 6K Pro. The reason I split these sets up isn't because of the V-Log differences, but because the S5 2X B-RAW footage has a superpower that I wish the S5 B-RAW footage had. So let's jump in and see what that is. When you select the far left icon, the camera icon, you'll enter the camera raw tab. If you select the clip option beside decode using, you'll see the rest of the menu open up, including the superpower. Highlight recovery is now available for the S5 2X B-RAW footage. I think this is a big deal and I'll explain why in a minute. Now here's a clip from the S5. After we enable the clip option, highlight recovery is sadly still missing. According to Gerald Undone, highlight recovery adds about 0.8 stops of light to the S5 2X B-RAW footage. And the camera is already rated at 12.4 stops at medium, or signal noise ratio of 2, on CineD's website. So if you select the highlight recovery button to turn it on, you will have a total of 13.2 quality stops of light, which is a lot. This would technically be tied with the Sony Venice 2 8K if the 0.8 added stops of light is also rated at the signal noise ratio of 2. The S5 is no slouch, though, with a measured medium rating of 12.1 stops of light, which is well below the S1H's amazing 12.7, and about the same as the S1's 12.2, which is where the S5 sensor supposedly came from. In short, I would only add the B-RAW settings if I'm using the 6K Pro or the S5 2X to gain any lost highlight information before I color correct. If you want to copy the camera raw settings and paste to the other clips, then just select the clip you are copying the settings from and select the clips that you want to, and that can be clips plural, that you want to apply the setting to while holding the command key. Then press the button use settings and your settings will transfer from the highlighted clip to the rest of the clips. Okay, now that you have the highlight recovery turned on, let's follow Colin Kelly's ACES workflow because I think it is the easiest to use. Uh, links to his videos are also in the description. There are so many different ways to set up your color pipeline, including using color space transforms, which are great, but ACES is my favorite so far. First, notice that there are only two dots above the node area for this clip right now. After we add clips into groups, this will turn into four dots, adding a dot before the clip and a dot after the clip making it a group. I'll select both 6K clips and call this group 6K. Normally I would have more files to select for each group, but I'm going to still follow the same steps with just one clip at a time and add into a new group and call this group S52X. And the last group S5. Now see the extra dots. Let's select the first one. 
which is going to place a node before the clip node structure of all the videos assigned to that group. Add ACES from the effects library. Select Panasonic Vericam VLOG VGAMMIT. Then select ACES CCT. Now let's just copy this node for the S5 group preclip since the settings will be the same. For the 6K group preclip, we'll add ACES. Select Blackmagic Film Gen 5 for input transform and ACES CCT for output transform. Now let's go to the timeline, which is located after all the clips and transform all the inputs back to Rec. 709. Add ACES, select ACES CCT for input, and Rec. 709 for output. Now we can color grade all the footage together. If you don't want to grade all the footage together, then just put the ACES CCT to Rec. 709 conversion in the group post clip, which is here. If you want a perfect white balance for the shot, then the only true methods I know of are to white balance the camera during the shoot or to have something white in the shot to white balance to later. Yes, it's true that if you shoot in RAW, you can change white balance in post, but you still need a reference point. White balancing the 6K is super easy. Just hold your white reference in front of the camera and hold the white balance or WB button until the square appears and you're done. Crazy simple. And you can see the new white balance numbers at the top of the screen. The S5 is pretty easy too and works in a similar fashion, but I couldn't find the white balance value after it was captured. It is recorded in the B-Raw information, so you'll see it in DaVinci though. If you don't have a reference to white in post, then use the vector scope and the offset color wheel to adjust. I purposely messed this one up for an example. The center of the vector scope is white while the colors surround it. Now let's use the offset and pull the pattern to the middle while looking at the shot. If there is a lot of blue in the image, then the pattern will show that it is reaching for that color. So moving the pattern directly in the middle won't work perfectly. The reason I share this method is if you want to inspect a shot really quickly, then this can help. But we're going to stick to what I mentioned earlier for this workflow. I did perform a white balance for these test shots and also left the gray card with a white reference in the shot. There are white point and black point markers as well if you know something is truly black or white to try to help, but I don't use those tools to be honest. I haven't had that much luck with them with most shots. So back to the gray card. We used it in the first video to find middle gray and now we will use it here in post to make sure our white balance is good. Just select the white dropper tool, then select the white box on the card. Placement of this card is also important. Make sure to put it close to the focus of the shot, whether subject or espresso machine in this case. Matching balance and colors can take time. I don't want to provide an illusion that matching colors is quick and easy, but knowing which tools to use will definitely help speed up the process. Usually you will have a master shot for a scene that has full coverage from beginning to end to try to find a relatable shot within the master shot to match to your clip. Then you would save the clip to the gallery and then use that clip to massage the footage to match. I'm gonna cheat a little here for simplicity of this lesson and show you three shots using these three cameras taken from the same angle. The first is the 6K, the second shot is the S5 2X using the video assist, and the third is the S5 also using the video assist. So all three clips are B-Raw like the other examples so far. You can see all the clips are really, really close to each other already. So it's a testimony of how well these cameras work well together. I already white balanced them to the white on the gray card like before. So let's use the parade to help match the gain for our three colors. We are going to match the S5 clips to the 6K. So let's grab a still of the 6K and we'll leave the gray card in the shot. Now let's zoom in on the gray card. As we zoom in closer to the square, notice that the parades are not changing. I'll show a second example where the parades will follow the zoom next. Turn on the image wipe. Make sure the image wipe tool is selected for the timeline. 
and move the wipe in the middle of one of the squares on the gray card. It will not be possible to match the gray card in every shot, nor is it necessary, but when you see the two principles in practice for balancing gain and color, it'll make sense. We will add another node to the S5-2X clip, then move the white back and forth to see what the pattern is doing. You can see the luminance differences, so let's move the gain up and down and see how it matches. Okay, that looks like a good match on the parades. So let's reset the node and try this over using the sizing tab which is what you'll use more often when trying to match a portion of a master shot. You'll probably zoom in on the master shot and less with your other shots. We'll select the 6K clip again, but this time we are going to zoom in on the gray card using the sizing tab. Okay, that looks good. Now we will grab the still for the gallery again and select our S5 2X clip. Now let's zoom in on the same thing on the S5 2X clip using the sizing tab as well. Okay, we're close. Let's turn on the image wipe again and line up the gray card. As we wipe back and forth this time, there's a lot less noise to compete with, so we can clearly see where the gain is off. We'll just pull the gain up a little and it matches again. After we're done, we'll just select reset for both clips on the sizing tab and we're back to normal. Okay, now that we have matched balance, let's find any items that may have a different hue or color to them, and I'll demonstrate using the Curves tab to help find an exact color to adjust. Here's one area that seems a little suspect. I'm not isolating this area, so whatever change I do here will affect the entire shot. When we click the Curves tab, you'll notice all of these buttons. Hue versus hue, hue versus saturation, hue versus luminance, and so on. Don't worry so much about the name of the tools for now. I'm going to select hue versus hue for the first one and use the eyedropper tool to select the color in question. It magically shows me the range in the histogram below where this color is located. Make sure there are two dots on either side of the adjustment dot and then pull it up or push it down and see what happens. If nothing is affected in the right direction, then reset the curve and try the next one, hue versus saturation, and then also hue versus luminance. I think that looks a little bit better, but probably not completely necessary. I would probably use the qualifier to find all of this color in the shot before going through each curve tool, but this gives you a basic idea of how to use the curve tools. Use them to find the colors in question, then adjust those small areas and see if they match the curves for better or worse. Okay, now we are finally ready for the fun part, which is the color grade this footage. This is stylizing the images for the feel you want to express in the film. So color correction gets the footage to look normal, while color grading gets the footage to look cinematic or whatever style you're looking for. Here are a few good approaches to start with. Use a mood board to mimic the style you're going for. Use LUTs to get the style you already like, and use effects to motivate the light and ambience. I use an app called Melanote to create my mood board and a lot of other random helpful boards to support the Filmer project. They're easy to share with other creators so we can all add our notes at the same time. And no, they're not sponsors for this video. Why use a mood board? Because this is what I use to help provide influence on the look of the film to shape the feeling of the film. You are looking for colors that complement the mood. Here's the mood board I have so far. Now let's match a clip to something from the mood board. There are a few ways. One is dangerous but effective and the other takes time but is useful. The dangerous method is an automatic feature called color matching and it's dangerous because you don't have access to the specific items changed by DaVinci sadly. At least I couldn't find them. All you see is a dot on the color match tab. But if you're in a hurry and don't need too many adjustments it'll work. This is a quick hack to try to quickly match styles in other films you like using a function called Shot Match. Import a stylized clip you want to match into DaVinci, select the clip you want stylized, then select the clip you want to copy the style from while holding the command key, and right click the stylized clip. Then select Shot Match to this clip. Most of the time it does a great job matching the style. If it crushes your picture, just back off the key output in the key tab to a comfortable level. 
Let's try this again with a few different types of stylized shots. The first one was from Blade Runner 2049. The second one is from Stargate SG-1, of course. And the third is from the original Blade Runner. Use this function for experimenting with different looks if you know a style you're trying to match. But like I said before, DaVinci sadly doesn't allow you to see all the settings changed. You just see a small red dot on the color match tab saying it changed something in there. But this is still a lot of fun playing around with in order to see how your images look when matched to some of your favorite movies. The better method is to look for a LUT that is close, then adjust the dials like we did earlier. If you can't find a LUT to match, then look online and begin to dial it in. Using LUTs isn't as straightforward as it seems. Some LUTs require a specific input to work correctly, while others are created for very specific cameras. I'm not going to walk through every LUT and their use, but here are some examples. LUTs or lookup tables are broken up by their two types of uses just like this video is divided by color correcting and color grading. As we discussed already, the purpose of color correcting is to get the image to look normal or like it was shot from the camera and the purpose of color grading is to create a specific style or look of the film. Now add to the mix, there are all kinds of cameras and different color spaces and gammas. It's easy to understand why there's so many of these LUTs came from. Scrolling down this list, you can see camera after camera with LUTs engineered to match those specific cameras. Let's look at ARRI. ARRI has a LUT that converts to Rec. 709, which is a color correction, and then a bunch of LUTs that are created to mimic specific styles, which are color grades. Scroll down to Panasonic, and you'll see a V-Log to 709 LUT. Can you guess what type of LUT this is? You guess correctly, it is a color correcting LUT. This LUT changes Panasonic V-Log flat looking footage to Rec. 709 full looking color profile. And as mentioned earlier, there are so many methods to get to the same results, so experiment to find what works best for you. There are many LUTs that require special conversions. For example, film look LUTs are popular because they represent a great look that has been famous in the film industry for a long time like the Rec. 709, Kodak, 2383, D55, 60, and 65. But if you want to use the film look LUTs, then you are forced to transform the footage to a Cineon film log profile. Blackmagic says in their manual that B-RAW is a modified version of the standard Cineon curve, but still different, so it needs to be converted. And one quick note about color space transforms before I move on, since I know they're super popular to use, Alex Jordan showed a step that made a huge difference. Make sure to watch Alex Jordan's video in the description below for more details. But I'll demonstrate quickly before moving on. You should update color space and gamma for the nodes after the CST if the transform output is different from the timeline. Let me demonstrate. I'm now going to demonstrate converting a clip to Cineon Gamma using a color space transform with 6K B-RAW clip. This clip is not within our ACES workflow as shown earlier. Select effects. Drag the color space transform effect to a node. Select Blackmagic Design Wide Gamut Gen 4 5 for the input color space. And for input gamma, select Blackmagic Design Film Gen 5. And finally, output gamma to Cineon Film Log. Add another node and apply the Film Looks LUT, Rec. 709, Kodak 2383, D65. The 65 is for a color temperature of 6500 and seems to fit a little bit better than the 55 or 60. But here's the issue. The LUT node must have the same color space in gamma as the CST output because it is still default to project settings for color space and gamma. Let me show you. If you right click, go down to color space, you'll see use timeline is checked. Under gamma, use timeline is also checked. So all you have to do is select Cineon Film Log. Now this is correctly set up. We are keeping the Rec. 709 for color space, which is already the timeline setting from the project setting. You'll have to repeat this step with any node after the CST if the gamma is still Cineon Film Log. Please watch Alex Jordan's video for further explanation of why if you're still curious. Let me know if you had any thoughts, as I know there are a few landmines I'm stepping on when discussing LUTs. There are so many great efforts that can add depth to your footage, but I'm just going to demonstrate one of my favorites, Halation. Here I'm just going to kind of click the nodes on and off so you can see the effects. It just adds a really nice glow that's 
really unique and really cinematic. Here in the footage, you can see it kind of between the trees, adds a really nice sheen onto the grass. Here I'm kind of clicking it on and off so you can see between the, the trees there. You have a lot of control how the effect is, is applied, so definitely experiment. Halation is one of my favorites. Let me know what kind of workflow you typically follow in your color grading. This is the more creative area that shapes your look. How do you match the look to your film? This was a fun exercise for me to put together all of this information into one video because it's what I'm using for the short film Unity, Stargate fan film. The 6K Pro and the S5 series cameras are truly amazing platforms to film with. The next video in this series will dive into using these two cameras together with various equipment on set, focusing on how they can complement each other more effectively. If you have any questions, then please leave them in the comments below. And if you want to continue getting content like this, then like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.